newsmen have to put up with a lot of loose talk about how we cover only the spectacular stories and never mention the great silent majority of citizens who are minding their own business. Today is Equal Time Day. We're happy to report that today in Tarrant County there's not one riot on any college campus. There's a lot more. For example, since Commissioner's Court isn't meeting today, there aren't any angry citizens at the courthouse. The Fort Worth City Council isn't in session, so there's no discussion of the garbage bag question. We're pleased to announce that nobody's raising taxes, although there are reports that several public officials are sitting at home thinking about it. You'll be delighted to hear that the post office hasn't raised rates for over a week. Out there in the city, a lot of people are respecting their flag and their country on this holiday. And we understand that several citizens are spending the day telling their children the story of the Declaration of Independence. It's all not news. Isn't it exciting? Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the move in a very quiet Fort Worth. Sometimes I would prefer the sticks, and especially if I stop all of them. But for goalkeeper, for any goalkeeper, it's much better if he has uh, to work constantly during the game. It's much easier to keep the concentration, to keep the warmth, and be ready for any difficult shots. Well, now, uh, do you sort of have to bring just six opportunities to prevent the ball from coming into the net? How do you pace yourself during the rest of the game? I would try to keep my warmth, just running, making some exercise. Just and concentrate as much as I could, especially in the first half when I had just a couple of corner kicks too. And in second half, it was much, it was much easier, especially in uh, about 15-20 uh, minutes before the end when they had a couple of shots on the goal, uh, and I was ready for that. Well, a 5-0 lead is a rather comfortable lead for any goalie, isn't it? Yeah, that's a comfortable lead, but I was afraid that maybe our players will stop in the last 10 minutes to play because we had a really hard game Friday night in St. Louis and we play really in full speed and full condition during the, the 80 minutes of that game. So I was afraid that maybe they will slow down a little bit and give them more opportunities to a great team to come in the scoring position. Yeah, very, uh, for me it is. It's the first time I've been back here since I uh, made that movie. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to take Julie out and show her some of the little towns we uh, shot in. And, um, and uh, she's never been in Texas. And, uh, do you have good memories of Texas in your family? I don't have any bad ones. Well, Tom, do you think we'll have a Major League franchise this next year? Yes, I, I think we'll have a Major League franchise next spring, Jerry. Now, uh, I must admit to you that I've thought that in springs before, but I'm going to keep on thinking it until some spring it happens. What is your basis for your renewed optimism? The feeling expressed in both leagues by many owners with whom I've personally visited face-to-face -face in recent weeks that the Dallas-Fort Worth territory is just too valuable to be ignored any longer. I'm convinced that both leagues would like to be a part of this region, and we're trying to uh, convince uh, both of them that they'd better hurry before the other one gets here first. Let's analyze some of the clubs that are available. The Washington Senators. I think the Senators are in an impossible situation, whether they move here or uh, somewhere else uh, if someone beats them here. 
they are sharing a market with Baltimore, the same fans, the same radio TV territory. The two teams can't survive. They're closer together than Dallas and Fort Worth uh, are one to the other. Chicago White Sox. If the league had its choice, I'd say that they'd probably rather move the White Sox than any other, but the White Sox ownership is uh, uh, firmly financed and uh, have not shown too many signs uh, to me that they wish to move. They want to fight the Cubs a little longer. What do you think about Cleveland? Cleveland ownership obviously wants to stay there. It's local in nature, but uh, they have serious attendance problems. Uh, I think there is strong sentiment within the league if not in the Cleveland ownership itself, that uh, time has run out uh, for them. So with that view in mind, we're certainly uh, uh, actively uh, pursuing uh, this particular possibility. San Diego? The attendance figures speak for themselves. They're in big trouble. They're in Southern California where there are three teams in Dodger country, and two of them are suffering because of it. Uh, I have severe doubts that San Diego can make it on its own, uh, we're certainly going to keep calling on them. And for a Major League franchise, would you put up with Charles Finley? Yes, sir, because along with Charles Finley comes one Vita Blue, and perhaps the most exciting young team in the Major Leagues now. The people of Texas have an opportunity during the next lieutenant governor's term of office of Im <clears throat> improving their basic form of state government. We now have a system characterized by a lack of flexibility that ordinary prudence re requires effectively to operate a multi-billion dollar enterprise. We have a system characterized by the recurrent crises that are the mark of our current form of state government. <clears throat> The opportunity that I refer to, of course, is the Constitutional Convention that the legislature has proposed to the people for the spring of 1974. The Texas state government is handicapped by being forced to function <clears throat> under, the, under a charter almost a century old and which contains a great deal of material that should be the subject of statutory rather than constitutional law. For example, even specific rules of procedure for the two houses of the state legislature are included, needlessly included, in the Constitution. At the previous meeting of the Welfare Board, when this was under consideration, I did make a suggestion that, in my opinion, we were undoubtedly going to find that there was malnutrition or hunger in areas where the economically uh, well let's see, economically disadvantaged people uh, are living we know that there is this what I would rather do would be to for us to see if we can't gather together resources and a project with finances to run a control effort to see if we can alleviate malnutrition to make a study of it in that manner. How would you find this pilot study? Well, again, we would go on the same basis. We'd, we'd seek sources that are working, uh, that are already existing for this. We've already had some turn downs. Uh, we'd just continue our efforts to see if we couldn't develop the funds. Mr. O.L. Nims donated this uh, building uh, to the county free of choice about uh, three months ago. I understand this is your sixth location in Dallas County. Uh, this is correct. This is our sixth location, and I imagine uh, I could safely say this is, uh, would be one of our largest uh, operations in Dallas County, whereas we will be serving on an average, oh, within about five months, uh, close to about uh, 3,500 to 4,000 people, families, that is. Is this a more convenient location than what you formerly had? Yes, it is, because the majority of these people, well, practically all of these people, were receiving their food at the Harry Hines Distribution Center on our uh, uh, Harry Hines. Uh, we have transferred over 2,000 of those cases here at this particular center, and uh, we have left uh, only 2,000 cases at the Harry Hines Distribution Center. So 
It started with the French Championship. By the time we got to Wimbledon, there was a storm brewing. We spent a week there with negotiations and talks with the ILTF, the International Lawn Tennis Federation, and uh, the end product of it was that the talks broke down and we couldn't come to an agreement. How many countries in the world are members of the ILTF? I think there are 98 countries that represent the ILTF, ranging from the big countries like the United States, Great Britain, France, and Australia, who have 12 votes each, to the smaller countries like Monaco, who has one vote. In your opinion, is the ILTF run in a modern vein? No, absolutely not. I think that it's almost impossible to do business uh, with an organization that is so broad and has so, com so many committees and uh, getting decisions um, reached in a good manner is just incredible. Do you think the British press was prejudiced in releasing what they did of the meetings between WCT and... Well, they released, they released a lot of things that were very inaccurate. And uh, generally speaking, what they did was, uh, instead of saying that these are the points that are to be discussed, they said that these are the points that World Championship Tennis are demanding. And we weren't demanding anything at all. We were saying these are 10 or 12 points that we would like to discuss to see whether we can come to a mutually agreeable point of view. So they, I think, misinterpreted uh, our actions and those statements.
This sheaf of papers includes the new desegregation plan voted on by the Fort Worth School Board today in special session. The plan basically is this. The faculties of each school would be composed of 78% white teachers, 22% black teachers with a 12% tolerance. In addition, the city would be broken into five areas called clusters with the schools within that area located inside the cluster. Students would attend kindergarten in the first grade in their home school, that is to say the school nearest their home, and then between one and three years of their schooling within the cluster. If they live more than two miles from the school to which they're assigned, they would be bused with the state picking up the tab. The faculty paragraph passed the school board vote, but the cluster proposal failed. I asked board vice chairman Bill Elliott what happens now. Bill, now that you've eliminated the cluster situation out of the proposal, what are you going to have to put in there in order to satisfy the courts? Well, this will be up to the courts to decide. I, Jerry, I hope they buy the plan that we present to them. Well, then you're presenting it without the cluster situation. Do you think, really, they're going to accept this? Well, I hope they do. Of course, uh, who knows what the courts will do? I don't really know, but I hope they'll accept the plans of the neighborhood uh, school concept, that people go to the schools of their neighborhood and that you don't bust children. That's the issue. And I hope the courts uh, will uphold us on that. Do you anticipate putting another paragraph in there, something similar or maybe something completely out of left field? I hope not. Uh, the, uh, I hope our case is strong enough. Uh, if it's not, uh, I'm sure that uh, they'll maybe give us another chance at it or they'll bring in other uh, agencies to, to discuss the situation. Although the chambers were packed at the school board, only a few people came forward to discuss the proposal with the board. There was some voiced opposition, but mostly people were there simply to ask questions. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. The committee first learned of this from a telephone call from City Secretary Bateman, uh, who had learned first learned of this from a telephone call from one of the employees in the corporation court um, administrative staff, who I understand had first learned of one of these tickets quite by accident, simply in processing uh, tickets, which was his job, came across this and made uh, us made the City Secretary aware of it. And once the committee was aware of it, we asked for a full investigation of this situation and this developed uh, the five tickets that uh, are in question. What should the judge have done when his son appeared before him with these traffic tickets? Well, the judge should have, uh, the, the least he should have done would have been to refer all of these tickets to the other judge for the uh, uh, Judge Drago to handle instead of passing on these cases himself. because I wanted to be a part of the lawsuit to represent my interests. Well, what are those interests? The, method, the, the, may, the way in which I'll be affected by the uh, transportation possibilities of some of the proposed uh, school plans. Will you be put to a hardship by that plan? Uh, yeah, I believe so. It would cost me a lot of money. Uh, I don't know what the plans are, so I can't say. I, there's been, as you know, so many alternate plans proposed. I don't know. I know that... Uh, the, the worst of them certainly would require transportation of my family, it would be impossible. <laughs> 